Hello, and welcome back to Chapter 9. Today we're going to look at Section 9.5 that deals with the binomial theorem. Now, from your previous math courses, if you recall, a binomial is a polynomial that has two terms. So let's go ahead and look at the expansion of a couple um, basic binomials. We notice if we go x plus y and we raise that to the power of 0, we get 1, because anything raised to the power of 0 is 1. If I go x plus y raised to the first power, then I just get x plus y. If I go x plus y, the quantity squared, I end up with x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. If I go the quantity of x plus y raised to the third power, then I get x cubed plus 3x squared y plus 3xy squared plus y cubed. Next. There's actually a table in your book on page 683 that expands out a few more binomials. Um, but we've done enough here to kind of notice that there's a few patterns. Now, I have these patterns written out on the next slide, which you'll see here in just a second, but I want to talk about them while we're still on this slide. The first thing I want you to look at is that um, in each expansion, there's going to be n plus 1 terms. So in other words, if I have a power of 0 here, that's going to produce one term. If my n power, or um, like in this one here, I have the power of 1, I'm going to end up with two terms. Here I have a power of 2, so I'm going to predict that I have three terms, which I do right here. Likewise, if I have a power of 3, that means I'm going to have 3 plus 1 terms, or four terms total, and this pattern will continue. The next thing I want you to notice is that x and y are symmetrical. In other words, the powers of x are going to decrease by one and the power, or as the powers of y increase. So again, like let's look at the cubic um, function here. If x is x cubed here, it's going to decrease down to x squared, and it's going to decrease to x to the first, all the way down here, which is really x to the zero. Meanwhile, while this is going on, as x is being cubed here, y is really being raised to the power of 0. When x is being squared, y is being raised to the power of 1, or it's starting to increase, then I'm going to get my y squared and then my y to the third. Also, if you will notice, the sum of the powers will always equal that number n of your original function. So if I have x plus y to the nth power, or in this case I'm looking at the third power, the sum of my powers for any given term will always equal 3. So if I look right here, I have x cubed. Well, cube is 3. If I go to my next term, this is really x squared y to the first. 2 plus 1 is 3. Likewise, when I look at this term, I have x to the first y squared. 1 plus 2 gives me 3. And for this term here, I have y cubed. So again, my power is still 3. Um, and you can look at any of one of these examples here. But let's look at the middle term of my squared binomial. x to the first, y to the first, 1 plus 1 gives me 2, which is the same thing as my power in the binomial. And finally, the last pattern would be that the coefficients are going to increase and then decrease in a symmetric pattern. Okay, and what I mean by that is if you notice, I have a coefficient of 1 here, then I go 3, then I'm going to go 3 again, and I'm going to go 1. So it's kind of like I'm increasing, going 1, 3, and then I'm going to go 3, 1. Likewise, I do the same thing in the squared spot. It goes 1, 2, 1. So I'm going 1, 2 as an up, and then 2, 1 down. And um, in the first two terms here, it's a little bit more difficult to see that. But if you look at the fourth term, you're going to go 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. So it's go one, it goes 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Um, and again, you'll see that on page 683. Now, these are the um, notes that we just made on the previous uh, slide there. So if you want, you can pause the video and write this stuff down. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and move forward. The next thing we want to talk about is called the binomial theorem. Now this theorem is actually all written out on page 683 in your textbook, but in essence it says in the expansion of a binomial x plus y that's being raised to the power of n, the coefficient of x to the nth minus r 
power times y to the r power is written as n is a subscript of c, and r is also a subscript, and this is all equal to n factorial divided by the quantity of n minus r times, or I'm sorry, factorial times r factorial. And just so you know, sometimes the format or the notation of ncr can be written as nr. I will show you how to do this on your calculator in class, but I also um, I really want you to know that these two notations really mean the same thing. And I'm going to tell you that you will see both of these on a test or quiz. For example one, we are going to find the binomial coefficients. And in part A, it says 9C2. Now, if you remember back to our definition, NCR is equal to N factorial divided by the quantity of N minus R factorial times R factorial. So in this case, 9 is my N value and 2 is really my r value. So to plug these numbers in now, I have n factorial or 9 factorial divided by n minus r, which would be 9 minus 2 factorial times r or 2 factorial. When we simplify this, it's 9 factorial divided by 7 factorial times 2 factorial and this is going to give me 36. What this is really finding is the coefficient um, of your binomial expansion. Now part B says we're going to find the binomial coefficients of, and it says 11, 4. Now if you recall, 11 is really in the n spot and 4 is really in the r spot. So once I can distinguish between n and r, now it's just a plug into the equation. So I'm going to end up with 11 factorial divided by 11 minus 4 factorial times 4 factorial. This gives me 11 factorial divided by 7 factorial times 4 factorial and this is going to give us 330. Now I know we've talked about this a couple times before um, this year, but there is a more convenient way to remember or find the pattern for binomial coefficients. Okay, and this method is called Pascal's Triangle. Pascal's Triangle actually looks something like this triangle that you see on the screen right now. Now what you'll notice is that the first number of every row and the last number of every row is always 1. For the remaining numbers, we're going to add two numbers from above. So in this case, let's look at this row right here. I'm going to start out with a 1 because every row begins and ends with 1. To come up with this term here, I'm going to take, and let me draw this in, if I take 1 and add it to this one, I get 2. And then I'm going to end my row with a 1. Likewise, if I go to my next row here, okay, I'm going to start out with a 1. And then to come up with this 3, I'm going to go 1 plus 2 gives me 3. Then for my next term, I'm going to go 2 plus 1 gives me 3. And then I have to end with a 1. And this pattern is going to continue on forever and ever. Now, you're probably going to ask yourself, where does this help me with binomial expansions? Um, and the key piece to this is these right here, each row is kind of indicating a power. What I would do here is this row here is really like our zero. This is the zeroth row. This here would be the first row the second row, third, fourth, fifth, and so on. So what this tells me over on this side 
is I really have x plus y to the power of 0. For the first row, I really have x plus y to the first power. Then I have x plus y to the second power, and so on. And if you think about it, it let's look at x plus y squared, for example. Let me change my color here. Okay, if I take and I expand this out, I know from my special um, product properties that if I go x squared, or x plus y squared is going to give me x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. Well, if you notice, I have a coefficient of 1 in my x squared term, which is what this tells me. I have a coefficient of 2, which is what my Pascal triangle tells me. And then I have a coefficient of 1 on my y squared term. Now, on our next slide, that we have the um, expansions all given to you. So if you notice, so if I come down here to this right he, uh, here, and I want to know what the quantity of x plus y cubed is, I can see that I have x cubed plus 3x squared y plus 3xy squared plus y cubed. And in the blue numbers here, you'll notice that you have your Pascal's triangle, and it looks like they've taken it up to the seventh uh, power function. Now you can use Pascal's triangle on your test or quizzes because it's something you can generate relatively quickly and easily. However, I will not be giving this to you on a test or quiz. For example two, we're going to write the expansion for x plus 2 all raised to the fourth power. Now what we're going to do is I notice that this is the fourth power or the fourth row of my Pascal triangle. And if you recall, the fourth row of my Pascal's triangle says four, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. So these are my coefficients. Therefore, I know that I have an x to the fourth power plus a 4 and I'm going to go x cubed and then my y in this case is a 2 so I'm going to multiply that by 2 and then I'm going to add that to my coefficient of 6 now x cubed is going to continue to decrease so now that becomes an x squared and this time my y term or my 2 is going to be squared plus I have the coefficient of 4x times 2 to the third plus 2 to the fourth. And just as a double check, all of my exponents should equal 4. I have x to the fourth, so I have a power of 4. Here, on my next term, this is really 2 to the first, so 3 plus 1 is 4. 2 plus 2 is 4. This is an x to the first, so I have 1 plus 3 is 4, and then I have my fourth term there. So everything looks good so far. Now all I have to do is go through and simplify. And to do that, I end up with x to the fourth plus 8x cubed plus 24x squared plus 32x plus 16. And this here is my final answer. The only thing we have to keep in mind when using Pascal's triangle, if we're adding two binomials, we can just go ahead and do everything as we've talked about so far. When we are looking at a difference, however, we do have to alternate our signs. So example three says write the expansion for the quantity of 2x minus y to the fourth power. And again, our coefficients from the fourth row of Pascal's triangle is 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. So if I expand this, now I'm going to take this term. This is going to be my quote-unquote x term. So I'm going to go 2x, and I have to raise this to the fourth term. And because of that subtraction, I'm going to have to alternate. So 2x to the fourth is positive, so my next term is going to be negative. And then I'm going to go, oops, I have to multiply that by my coefficient first. And my coefficient is 4. Then I'm going to take my 2x term and cube it. 
and my y term is still going to be y to the first. I do not have to bring that negative because when I alternate my signs, I'm taking into account for those negatives. So don't worry about the negative y, you just want to take the y value. Then I'm going to alternate signs and make that a positive. I have a coefficient of 6 times 2x raised to the second power. And then I'm also going to have to take my y value and raise it to the second power as well. Then I'm going to have minus 4 times a quantity of 2x times y cubed. And then I'm going to add y to the fourth. And again, now it becomes a simplification game. And now we get 2 to the 4th, which is going to give us 16x to the 4th, minus 2 cubed is going to be 8 times 4, or 32x cubed y, plus 2 squared is 4 times 6 is 24x squared y squared, minus 4 times 2, which is 8x y cubed plus y to the fourth. And this here then will be our final answer. And now, time for our fun fact of the day. Today's fun fact deals with some Michigan information, and this comes from the Michigan.gov website. It says that Michigan has more than 11,000 inland lakes and more than 37, or I'm sorry, 36,000 miles of streams. At any given point, you are never more than six miles from one of these lakes or streams. So uh, give that a little bit of thought, and we will talk to you guys tomorrow. Have a good night.